Hello my soccer universe. Let's have some final and parting thoughts on the AFCON 2019 in Egypt. First of all, this is how it ended. We have Algeria ahead of Senegal, the jersey that I picked up today, ahead of Nigeria, ahead of Tunisia. And I'm wearing what I consider the best jersey of the entire tournament. It was of course the Mali away jersey, which we actually saw once. Now, which gets me to one of the first points. One of the reasons that I personally love the AFCON is that it probably has the best jerseys of any tournament overall. And it's not really shown here because all the jerseys I have that are white or very light, those are the ones hanging here. Behind there are my colorful jerseys, which is Cameroon in dark green, the Cote d'Ivoire in orange, we have Ghana in red, we have um, Burkina Faso in green, and we have South Africa in yellow. And all the ones that have lighter colors um, are hanging here. So that's maybe the one thing that bothers me with this uh, set up here. That was one reason why I thought of getting the uh, current Senegal shirt in green, but can you beat this shirt with that lion? No, you cannot. And at least we have here the Nigeria shirt. And yeah, Tunisia and Algeria play in uh, white. So, you know, it is what it is. And this jersey is just better in white. So uh, you have at least have the eye candy here, here, and here. But I would agree it's not as colorful. However, there were a bunch of great jerseys at this AFCON. Not only Mali had great jerseys, we are also talking about Madagascar, of course, Nigeria. Uh, with of the great jerseys, probably for the least good one, but you know, it's still an absolute uh, screamer, that jersey. We had uh, Mauritania have a great one, we had uh, Tunisia have a great one, we had Angola have a great one. Group E was the best jersey group. Uh, that I have ever seen. And unfortunately, Tunisia never played in their wonderful, wonderful third jerseys. That one I would have loved to see. And I wonder why they didn't use that design for um, other, uh, for the other two jerseys. So yeah, that is always one of the main reasons for me to watch the AFCON because you see color matchups, namely, uh, you know, a lot of green, a lot of red, a lot of yellow uh, mixed with white, you usually give something nice. And then you get the occasional blue team like Tanzania, uh, or I think if Namibia play, decides to play in green, um, that makes it a little bit more interesting visually to watch. Um, what are the other reasons that I watch the AFCON for? Um, the other one is, you know, dodgy goalkeeping, which you had a little bit there. I mean, um, many games were decided by goalkeeping mistakes. So that is always, and you know, always this interest. Um, do the African teams, if they can get organized, they're usually fun to watch. That we saw very little of, unfortunately. Uh, and yeah. That's uh, that's one of the big negatives is that the level of play and I have to say has been a while that I've seen great AFCON matches. We of the ones that I've seen, I mean I've seen a lot, but I've not seen all all of them. But from the ones I've seen, I can only say that one was a really really exciting game. There were a few that were uh, good, but uh, then most of them were honestly stinkers and. I have to say the big reason for that is, of course, that this was played in the summer heat. We even had, uh, after sundown, you had temperatures below th uh, beyond 30 degrees at, uh, at certain points, uh, or at least in the high 20s, which makes it really, really, really tough to play. Uh, it just sucks the life out of you uh, if you have lived in the heat. And I know uh, I have been in the southern states, you can, you, it, it gets very, very hot and unpleasant. It just sucks the life out of you. Uh, and yeah, even if it's a dry heat like in the desert, I don't expect it to be very, very pleasant. Uh, the games in Alexandria were the exception most of the time because those were played in the later hours. So yeah, that was the level of play was dodgy, to, 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 to say the, the least. Uh, probably the best team overall was Algeria. Sometimes Nigeria showed glimpses of hope. I honestly haven't seen much of Madagascar, but from all over here, Madagascar, despite having uh, players from the third or fourth French leagues mostly, um, you know, no-name players, were actually quite organized and played very well. Um, 
I only saw them when it all fell apart against Tunisia because the other games of Madagascar, yeah, the, against the DRC, I only saw overtime. That was always something in my scheduling uh, that I never really could watch Madagascar, which is kind of a shame because um, whatever I saw, not on, on, on the jerseys I heard, it was positive things. So that, that, that would be nice to see. Um, Another positive I have to say is I think this was a tour tournament where probably the two right teams, although I think an argument could be made for Nigeria, but I think Nigeria, Algeria, Algeria was the better team, so deservedly went on. Um, but you know, the most talented squad was Senegal, I think. Uh, and I hate to say it because I really like Ali Sissé, but I think better coaching could do them really, really well, uh, especially, you know, reacting very very late mm, to things there is something to be said to be waiting sitting and waiting a little bit and let it play out but there were some obvious ones like niang was not in the team uh he was working hard but often uh, futility uh on the other side uh, uh, algeria was very often a real real joy to watch i absolutely have to say that um that midfield with mares belaili benase they are uh, really, really fun to watch. And then you have Buna John in front, who is this, I always call him Ness, in a positive way. A really nasty, hardworking striker, gets in your face, gets makes the runs when you need them. That's what I like to see. And now we get to the negatives. Um, attendance for me is one of the bigger uh, ones. I mean, not only the dodgy play, but attendance. Unless it was Egypt playing or it was um, a... A uh, game that was ahead of an EEG game, there were usually no spectators. Um, except for the final, which finally had some spectators again. I also thought that the quarter quarterfinal between Nigeria and South Africa was reasonably filled. But the rest, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I understand that it is harder for African fans to travel. Uh, especially, I think there was once a guy from Zimbabwe who tried to travel from Cape Town to Cairo. And he was... Uh, talking about all the troubles to see the opener. He never made it to, to the opener, but he was at least at the final. Um, all the troubles with visas and, and so for Africans to get through. Uh, that was really, really hard for him. So that was one. Uh, it's one way. It's really hard for Africans to travel within Africa. So getting the support is hard. But then that the locals and probably also down to the heat, I, I, I can imagine, are not showing up for games is also a disappointment. I mean, this is the AFCON. This is the biggest tournament in Africa. Go watch. I mean, when do you see a Sadio Mane unless you see him on TV? Uh, or Riyad Mahrez. I mean, there are great players there uh, that you just got to watch. You don't see them that often. So that was a big disappointment. Um, I also thought, you know, I understand the AFCON needs to be played in the summer months. But don't give it to hotter regions. I'm sorry. It just... I, I, South Africa would make more sense, or Southern Africa. But I understand you want to spread it around. But um, I think the level of play clearly suffered from that. Another thing that I didn't like was kind of the pacing of the tournament. I actually liked how, how they did the group stage. You had uh, an opening game, then you had, uh, you know, always three games um, at a time, which I think made for quite nice uh, overall scheduling. Uh, I'm just checking. Yeah, there was only one. There was one. You could have done uh, the entire group, group series 3 3 3, but yeah, you want to have the opener. Uh, by its own and then you had um, you know group F then had its own day so you had one day with two, two games then you could all do it three three I even like that they finished two groups at a time uh, in on the last ma matches so you had all the groups that's done within three days it was also good also that all the big name matchups there was a stretch in the group phase in the middle of the group phase where you had all the big names playing each other um, I think it's uh, started with what was now the final against Senegal against Algeria, then you had Morocco against uh, Cote d'Ivoire, then Cameroon Ghana. Uh, so that was all happening at once. And then uh, sprinkled in there was Tunisia Mali, which yeah is not, maybe not the big big name, but uh, game, but it's still a uh, quite decent matchup. So uh, that I liked, uh, but I think then they could have done a little bit more breaks because the weight, the pacing then was was all right um overall you had like um day rest uh even 
even three days rest for the uh, two days. 34th, two days rest until the round of 16, which was all right. Then he had two games. This was all right. But then only one rest for the day rest for the qual, quarterfinal. Then you had again two days rest uh, until the semifinals, which were all played on the same day. And then suddenly, again, two days rest and uh, the final uh, day, uh, two days later. And the final is five days after the semifinals played. That is not good pacing. Uh, there, I think you make at least a final play on a Saturday, kind of do this in space the rounds. I think having a few rest days in between doesn't hurt the tournament, uh, especially if you make a rest day after a round of 16, an additional one, or for the quarterfinals, I think that that, that would do good, but don't have the players sit around four days to play the final. Uh, in such a tournament, when you're used to playing every three or four days, Try to keep that rhythm uh, every three days. Try, try to keep that rhythm going a little bit. Um, it was clearly fizzling out after the quarter quarterfinals. It's always like a big tournament. After the quarterfinals, it gets a little bit thin. But then uh, you need the game spaced properly. And you know, I think the World Cup does it right that you have each semifinal on a separate day. Um, then you have the third place game and the day later is the final. I think this would this is a better spacing also with the days. I uh, maybe even I understand because you know the uh, for Muslims uh, Friday is the uh, day. I don't want to say the day off, but you know what Sunday is uh, for Christian culture is Friday um, in Muslim culture. So I even understood that the Friday that the um, final is played on the Friday. Still found it a little bit odd. Yeah. I guess that's what it. What I can say, as I said, I think the tournament built out the right champion. I yeah, I, I I I forgot to say one other positive note was for me South Africa, who gloriously um, botched their last group game against uh, Morocco, where they lost in a game that everyone wanted to have a tie, but uh, they still qualified. And then they beat Egypt and had even a good showing against Nigeria. So for me. Madagascar, Algeria, Nigeria, South Africa were kind of the positives. Morocco, like Senegal, very frustrating team because you can see there's a lot of talent there. They can do a lot, uh, but cannot get create chances or cannot take the chances. I think Senegal couldn't create chances and, Mor and Morocco didn't take the chances. So yeah, it got Senegal a little, a little bit further thanks to a, a nice schedule. Um, Cameroon, yeah. Win the group, Ghana. Uh, you gotta put away your chances. Uh, and I think seems like I can say if you're Mali, I think Cote, Cote d'Ivoire actually overachieved, in my opinion. But yeah, that was it for the AFCON. I decided to make a separate video where I just go through the entire tournament uh, with music and pictures uh, all by itself because otherwise this video is getting very, very long. But yeah, enjoy again. This most beautiful shirt of the AFCON that I'm wearing and at least two great jerseys here in the background. Uh, let me know what you thought about the AFCON. Um, again, um, three reasons to watch. Jerseys, dodgy goalkeeping <laughs> and the hope that you see a star of the future. Somehow that no one has realized yet. That's usually the reasons why I like to watch the AFCON. Anyway. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, although I will take a break. I might do a few more Jersey related videos, but those are short, short ones. But I'm definitely going to take a two, a two to three week break from uh, making videos. I just need it. I have a big deadline at, uh, at work coming up. I have vacation for myself that I really want to just have vacation. And then I'm going to pick it right up because, you know, club season is starting soon. But before that, I really, I need to take a soccer break for now. But yeah, after that, I'm going to talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel all things my soccer universe and with that i want to wish you a wonderful day